Jamal Murray is not only one of the best players in the NBA with his array of ball handling, shooting mechanics, and flair for the dramatic, but his ability to flip a switch and turn up his game to a Kobe Bryant type level when it matters most is what makes the man great. Provably the NBA's most deadly duo, Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray, are one win away from winning the Western Conference, as the number one seeded Nuggets have lived up to expectations for fans in the mile high, and then some. Murray and Jokic combined for 59, the underrated Michael Porter Jr. chipped in 14, and in his former home gym, Contavious Caldwell Pope dropped 17 with four triples. Stay tuned to see what makes this Nuggets team officially destined for glory, and how they've admittedly proved yours truly to be dead wrong. I'll always be the first one to admit my mistakes, and I was very wrong about this Lakers team, but if you enjoy NBA talk and admittance of wrong takes when they happen, join the 13% of you watching that are subscribed, splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow at dflowhoops on Instagram and Twitter. It wasn't a third consecutive triple-double from the Joker, but it was the second consecutive 35-plus point showing from Jamal, which now has the Nuggets five wins away from winning their first chip in the franchise's history. The Nuggets didn't show a single sign of complacency, knocking down bombs from the opening tap, and the typically offensive-fueled Nuggets would also have their best defensive performance of the series, neutralizing the Lakers with desperate closeouts, pristine on-ball defense, and pesky hands in both the passing lanes and to strip the Lakers around the rim slash on the perimeter. It was a night where Denver displayed they can win in multiple ways. We saw Denver win pretty in the opening two outings of these West Finals, but as the great Ray Lewis once said, defense wins championships, and despite being on the road where they were three games under 500 during the season, they didn't seem phased by the crypto crowd the slightest bit. Not seeming to feel any pressure on the biggest stage, Denver outclassed LA from the jump, as LeBron's first shift saw him attempt just one layup, and the first quarter saw the Lakers miss nine straight field goals and go well over five minutes without recording a bucket. The length of MPJ, the low center of gravity yet lengthy wingspan as well from Aaron Gordon, the back line of defense from Joker, the intensity of Bruce Brown Jr., or the underrated lateral movement in the backcourt from Murray, the Nuggets' IQ and awareness on defense just controlled the tempo. Jamal Murray was again a man on a mission from the jump, fueling Denver to an early 13-0 run in the mid-first quarter. Murray was scoring from everywhere in the opening frame, he was pulling up like he typically does, spinning back for fallaways in the lane after creating space from his defender, he was backing down in the post and fading away, hitting spot-ups, and generally the Ontario native had an intimidating, ballsy showing. While the Lakers were bringing late help on Jokic in the first half, the Joker got it rolling down the stretch, as the Lakers just weren't intent enough on doubling late. But you gotta give credit to the Joker, obviously. As the saying goes, it's a young man's game, and the movement of the Nuggets just seems different than this Lakers squad. The second quarter saw Jeff Green set the tone for the Nuggets with a beastly drive and finish on Anthony Davis, then he drew an offensive foul on AD the very next possession. Bruce Brown was getting deep into the lane, into either the dunker spot or into the pocket, which was bothering the Lakers' low men. The experience and leadership of this Nuggets team really stood out in the second half, with Jeff Green and Contavious Caldwell Pope being influential factors on both ends. Overall, this was a dominant statement by Mike Malone's ball club, as they've gone with the flow of their own narrative by calling out the disrespect from the media in terms of the lack of attention they've been getting. Malone infamously said after Game 1, the national narrative after Game 1 was, hey, the Lakers are fine, no one talked about Nikola, just had a historic performance, the narrative wasn't about the Nuggets, the narrative wasn't about Nikola, you put that in your pipe, you smoke it and you come back, and you know what, we're gonna go up 2-0. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. When Malone was asked about whether or not he thought the narrative would change after Game 2, he would say, I don't care if it does, because we know our narrative in that locker room, we know that we're not done, we haven't done anything yet, you gotta win a game on the other team's home court if you really wanna do something in the series, and we know how great that team is, especially on their home court. So we're not celebrating, this is not cause for celebration, this is a cause to continue to dig deep and find ways to be better.